Well, here is something that you might find interesting. Roman numerals were discovered on the Stone of Destiny ahead of King Charles III's coronation. New research has revealed previously unrecorded markings that appear to be Roman numerals on the Stone of Destiny. That's the Stone of Schoon, the coronation stone that's said to be Jacob's pillow stone. And of course, the stone is one of Scotland's most sacred national treasures. The Stone of Destiny which is also known as the Stone of Schoon, was first used to approve the crowning of kings in Scotland more than a thousand years ago. Honoring the traditions of the past, King Charles III has chosen to transport this sacred stone to Westminster Abbey in London for his coronation in May, where it will be placed inside a special coronation chair that was constructed to hold and support the heavy stone approximately 700 years ago. That was by Edward I who captured the stone during his invasion of Scotland. The details were discovered when experts examined a 3D printed replica of the stone created as part of the king's enthronement preparations for next month. Historic Environment Scotland used digital scanning technology to create a 3D model of the sacred object and this procedure has revealed previously hidden or unobserved details on the stones rough and uneven surfaces. Research shines new light on the Stone of Destiny ahead of London's move. And there's a photo by Historic Environment Scotland that I'll show you here. It's very exciting to discover new information about an object as unique and important to Scotland's history as the Stone of Destiny, said Hess head researcher Iwan Hislop in an interview with the Scotsman. The high level of detail we've been able to capture through the digital imaging has enabled us to re-examine the tooling marks on the surface of the stone, which has helped confirm that the stone has been roughly worked by more than one stonemason with a number of different tools as was previously thought. The discovery of previously unrecorded markings is also significant, and while at this point we're unable to say for certain what their purpose or meaning might be, they offer the exciting opportunity for further areas of study. New investigations have revealed previously unrecorded markings with the appearance of Roman numerals on the stone of Schoon's surface. The digital imaging has also improved visibility of the geological features of the stone, such as a cross beading, which is indicative of the geological conditions in which the sandstone was formed and which is characteristic of sandstone of the Schoon sandstone formation. The Stone of Destiny is usually displayed at Edinburgh Castle and has significant historical significance in Scotland. Its origins are unknown, but it is rumored to have biblical roots and to have played a role in the enthronement of Scottish kings for more than a century before its first recorded use in 1057 when Macbeth's stepson Lulach was proclaimed king at Schoon in Scotland. So let me tell you that last week it was revealed that the Roman numerals XXXV were discovered during a health check of the sacred sandstone as part of preparations for its transportation to Westminster Abbey for the coronation of King Charles III. And I looked this up. So I looked up Roman numeral XXXV and it is equivalent to the natural number 35. That 
Number 35 in Strong's Greek is a genealogitos. And it means, it's a negative participle, and it means unregistered as to birth, without descent. One whose descent there is no record of without genealogy. So then it quotes Hebrews 7.3 where we find this word, which is in the verse 7.3 in Hebrews, without father, without mother, without descent, and that's the Greek word that number 35 is, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. So that kind of shocks me, that right there, but made like the Son of God. Okay, so that just freaked me out because I looked it up in the Blue Letter Bible for the Hebrew number H35, Abiona, and it quotes this verse, if you can believe it. Now keep in mind, my whole book and testimony of the Lord is about the miracle of the almond tree. This is the verse they give, Ecclesiastes 12.5. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fears shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and here's the word, and desire, Abiona, shall fall, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. But I talk about how Jacob actually saw the holy menorah at the top of the ladder. He saw the almond tree. So the almond tree is flourishing because God gave me this testimony through the almond tree, and his testimony is going forward, and at the same time, this marking is on the stone of destiny. <laughs> I just find that amazing. The Scotsman reported, image of stone of destiny, Roman numerals revealed with mysterious number 35. An image of the Roman numerals found on the stone of destiny has been revealed as researchers focus on the mysterious number 35 carved into the stone. It was revealed last week that the numerals XXXV were discovered during a health check of the sacred sandstone as part of preparations for its transportation to Westminster Abbey for the coronation of King Charles III. Cutting-edge digital technology, including the first 3D scan of the 152-kilogram stone, offered new clues to the history of the historic object how it was quarried, and then worked over time, and new evidence of human interactions over the centuries. But researchers are so far baffled by the Roman numerals found on the underside of the stone, symbol of Scottish monarchy. Ewan Hislop, head of research and climate change at Historic Environment Scotland, which is known as HESS, which looks after the Stone of Destiny, said, We have newly revealed some Roman numerals on the underside. There are three X's and a V, so 35, and that's never been recorded before. We don't yet know what that means. This is new evidence that hopefully the historians can work with and make some sense of. We want people to look at that and the historians to dig a bit deeper, he added. The new 3D scanning data reveals a whole story of different surface markings, most of which are probably to do with the actual quarrying and shaping of the stone. We are seeing a number of different tool marks, including three different types of mason's chisels, a point chisel, a claw chisel, and a flat chisel. We also know that it was hammered at some time. 
We have clearly established that there are at least three phases of working by different hands. On the top of the stone, there is an attempt to cut out a recess using a very different tool. For some reason that was abandoned and never completed, the wrought iron rings were inserted at a later date, perhaps for carrying it or to secure it. Traces of copper alloy and dark stain on the upper surface suggest that a bronze or brass object may have been placed on the stone at some time. There are also thought to be two crosses, possibly with a religious origin. Meanwhile, microscopic traces of white gypsum plaster found in various places suggest a cast was made at some point possibly in Victorian times, although no record of this is known to exist. Repairs carried out after the stone was damaged in 1950, after four Scottish students famously took it back to Scotland from Westminster, can also be seen. The Stone of Destiny, also known as the Stone of Schoon, was used during the coronations of the Kings of Scotland until 1296, when it was seized from Schoon in Perthshire, by King Edward I of England. Edward had the stone built into a new oak throne at Westminster where it was used in the inaugurations of the monarchs of England and later of Great Britain. It was officially returned to Scotland on St. Andrew's Day in 1996 and it now sits alongside the honors of Scotland in the crown room that's where the crown jewels of Scotland are, in Edinburgh Castle. It will only leave Scotland again for a coronation in Westminster Abbey. The recent study and preparation for the crowning of Charles III allowed researchers to verify that the stone was quarried near Schoon, as previously thought, Mr. Hislop said. The equipment we have got can finger print a stone type, and so far we have matched that down to a layer of rock called the Schoon Sandstone Formation, which occurs around the Schoon area. Wow, well that's really different than what the other researchers had said. What is really exciting for me is that it means the Stone of Destiny is literally part of Scotland. It was formed as part of Scotland 400 million years ago and carries that geological provenance as well as all the legendary cultural significance, Rachel Dixon, Hess Regional Collections Manager said. Tool marks and other inscriptions have been revealed and we are not quite sure the significance of these at this stage. So it's very exciting. We are trying to look at all the different theories and perhaps work with historians to develop our understanding of the history of the stone and how it has been used. So personally, I don't think I would want to be coronated, seated upon a stone that has unknown markings on it and they don't even know what they mean. And there's other markings apparently that they've detected that they are not even telling us because they don't know what they are. In a Hebrew pictograph, each Hebrew alphabet letters has a picture that goes with it. So, for example, the third letter of the Hebrew alphabet, for if you were going to have the number 35, you would have the Hebrew Gimel and He. And Gimel, which I just talked about in one of my last videos about the camel, the gimel is meaning foot, camel, pride. So 35 on the stone of schoon, that's what that would mean. 
and he means lo, behold, the. If you'll recall the number three of the Gimel letter, that is the symbol of the ultra-Orthodox Jews in Israel. They use the symbol of Gimel, that letter. Now the stone of destiny is supposed to be Jacob's pillar stone, or it's the pillar that Jacob used as his pillow, but he set it up like a pillar. And what does a pillar represent in the Bible? The pillar is the bridge between heaven and earth. So you could say that this stone would represent this. The vertical axis which both unites and divides these two realms. It is closely connected to the symbolism of the tree. It also represents stability and a broken pillar represents death and mortality. And wow, you're not going to believe what I just discovered about this. When you go to the verse where Jacob set up the stone pillar, it was in Genesis 35. And that's the number that's on the bottom of the stone of destiny. They don't even know what it means or anything. But let me just quote the verse. It's Genesis 35. The number that's on the stone. And verse 14. And it says, Jacob set up a stone pillar at the place where God had talked with him. And he poured out a drink offering on it. And he also poured oil on it. Let's just read the Jewish Tanakh version of the Bible from 1917 in Genesis 35, 14. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he spoke with him, a pillar of stone. And he poured out a drink offering thereon and poured oil thereon. So I think the Lord's just showing me a total connection to the verse in Genesis 35, to the Roman numeral that's on the stone of Schoon, which is Jacob's pillow stone, which was the pillar that he set up in Genesis 35, 14. Could that be proof that it really is Jacob's pillow stone that he anointed and then was transported across the Mediterranean Sea at some point? And all of the kings of Scotland and then England had been coronated sitting upon that stone. The Lord caused me to find that right when I'm filming this, that the actual verse is in Genesis 35. So could that really be the Roman numeral 35 on the coronation stone showing that it is the stone of Jacob or Israel. And now we're going to have King Charles III coronated sitting upon it. What do you think Israel will think about this? So what you just witnessed was the Holy Spirit in motion showing me that verse has the association of the number 35 with Jacob's actual story that's on the stone of Schoon, the coronation stone of destiny. Wow! There are no coincidences, you know. And we see about Jacob setting up that pillar. The first, he set up four pillars in his lifetime, apparently, and the first pillar that's mentioned was set up at Bethel, where Jacob spent his first night away from home when he was compelled to run away to Padan Aram to escape the anger of his brother Esau. God had graciously shown him the ladder reaching up to heaven, and he had made unconditional promises to him. 
Jacob had real faith and valued God's promises, but he had a bad conscience, and this bad state of soul diluted his faith, making him uncomfortable in God's presence. Because he valued God's promises, he set up a pillar of stone, pouring oil on it, a type of the Spirit of God. But then he proceeded to attempt to make a bargain with the Lord, for his scheming nature had not yet been judged in God's presence. He continued to count on his own cunning and his own strength, rather than completely trusting the Lord. And this is from Bible Truth. It says, I would call this pillar the pillar of confidence in the flesh. <laughs> wow. So what does that verse about Jacob setting up the pillar mean? God appeared to Jacob more than 20 years earlier in Genesis 28, 10 through 12, as he fled from his brother Esau, Genesis 27, 42. In that first meeting, the Lord promised Jacob he would share in the blessings given to his ancestors. More recently, God encountered Jacob and changed his name to Israel. When Jacob returned to the place of his first divine meeting, God reminded him of these events and confirmed those promises. Now Jacob follows his pattern of worship following an appearance from the Lord. This is similar to what he did when God first appeared to him in Bethel as he was leaving the land of Canaan. Jacob now builds a stone pillar in worship to God. And Rabbi Richmond had said that that stone actually came and was a stone from the altar to the Lord. Then he pours over it both a drink offering and oil. This is the first mention of a drink offering in the Old Testament. Similar acts of worship will later be included in various forms in the law of Moses given to Jacob's descendants as instructions for worshiping God. Now, if this stone is actually Jacob's stone that he rested his head on in the place where he talked to God, then I told you that if they believe also that that same stone was what David sat upon when he was coronated, then Solomon had made the comment that he not only sat on the throne of David, but he was sitting on the throne of God himself. And this is how, if this one man, this one final earthly king sits upon the throne, he could claim to be sitting on the throne of God as the monarch. So I hope you can see how that falls into place I discussed it in earlier videos, and I just wanted to reiterate that here. And that the people, sometimes the subjects were, uh, when they do the coronation ceremony, the people have to say, God save the king. That's in the song that I played for you, the coronation anthem. That's Zadok the priest, one of my very favorite um, Handel songs in the whole wide world. It's extraordinarily awesome. So the subjects have to submit to their king and in some cases in the past they worship the king as a god. So you can see how that can fall into place in the book of Revelation so easily. But don't you think that it's interesting that God reminded Jacob that his promises to Israel would be kept and that they would inherit the land. And what is this king going to do for Israel is my question. There's something that entered my mind about the stone. And that is that... I wondered if it was a place that the Ark of the Covenant was set upon because you had two uh, rings in it that it could be carried like the poles in the Ark of the Covenant. And so that was just a thought and just thought I'd throw that out there. Maybe that stone was known and 
They took it, and that's why they're sitting on it. So there you have it live. They just discovered the Roman numeral XXXV, which equals 35, and they don't know what it means, but I'm telling you that Jacob setting up the pillar stone is Genesis 35, specifically verse 14. Can it be any more clear what it means? <laughs> and this is a huge discovery right now. So um, I think these people need to find out about this video and uh, they'll have their meaning figured out. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> One final thing I wanted to tell you is that Jewish leaders met the king to deliver special blessing ahead of the coronation. The group was led by president of the board of deputies, Marie van der Zell, who described the occasion as a tremendous privilege. And this was dated March 9th. A delegation of British Jewish leaders have met King Charles to deliver their personal congratulations and blessings on his upcoming coronation. The group was led by President of the Board. She read an address in the name of the Board of Deputies and the Anglo-Jewish Association congratulating the King following his accession to the throne. Each week our synagogues pray that the Almighty bless the entire royal family and that your majesty be delivered from all trouble and sorrow, she said in her address. We are grateful for this opportunity to recite the traditional Jewish blessing made upon being received by a monarch. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given of his glory to flesh and blood. Marie was accompanied by Michael Newman, president of the Anglo-Jewish Association, as well as her fellow honorary officers of the board, and it lists their names. Past presidents of the board were there, and the delegation also included um, people from the Sephardic community, some people from the Assembly of the Reform Rabbis, and the Herarity community. The Board of Deputies along with the Anglo-Jewish Association are among several dozen institutions and corporations which have the status of privileged bodies of the Crown, meaning that they have the right to present an address to the Sovereign in person. They are the only two Jewish organizations to have this status. The last such petition took place in 2012 on the occasion of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II's Diamond Jubilee. Following the address, van der Zell said, As President of the Board of Deputies of British Jews, it is a tremendous privilege to have been able to petition His Majesty the King on behalf of the Jewish community of this country. We thanked His Majesty for receiving us and expressed gratitude at living in a country where our monarch shows such great sensitivity to the inclusion of those of all faiths and none. Michael Newman, president of the Anglo-Jewish Association, said, It was a wonderful occasion and opportunity to visit His Majesty well ahead of his coronation to express how tremendously and, I guess, immensely proud we are of the contributions Jews have made to British society over many years. So they've given him their blessing as their monarch, and how easy is it going to be for that to happen in Israel when they are diminishing the democracy to set up the monarchy? Because they will put one man as the last king on that throne. Like, subscribe, and share, and support my channel work. Thank you so much. I hope this was enlightening. You just saw the Holy Spirit at work right before your eyes revealing what the number 35 means on the stone. Just incredible. Just absolutely amazing. Shalom for now.